past this old house, it's all about fireplaces. From the hearth to the chimney, we'll show you how to keep them safe and make them beautiful. See how this fits in. Fold that. All right, Chris, the mantle is done and I'm passing it off to you. Here it comes. Oh, there she is. Look at oh that, my gosh, huh? it looks great. Wow. Look at that, huh? What okay. do you think of your new gas lock? Thank you so much for your help. This is amazing. Stay tuned because we're just getting warmed up. All right, guys, that looks pretty good, huh? Hey, gang. What's hey, Kevin, what do you think? What's up, Kevin? Uh, what do I think? I think it looks quaint. Very well, nice. Yeah. Kevin, you said you wanted to do a show on fireplaces, so we're trying to accommodate. I brought some wood. Uh-huh. Marshmallows are here. Uh-huh. Real wood. Yeah. Real yeah. wood. Yeah. Real marshmallows. Yeah. Real marshmallows. And what are you going to do with those? Make some s'mores. Really? <laughs> yeah. S'mores. Oh, look, I got marshmallows on a stick for you guys. <laughs> we're all ready to go. You know that you need fire for s'mores, right? Right. You just... Yeah. You want to wreck everything. I, I know. It's an electric fireplace. Fun. It's an electric <laughs> fireplace. Believe me, I got it planned. Uh, Mark, when I said we should do an entire episode on fireplaces, I was thinking, well, first of all, it's getting a little chilly outside, mm -hmm. right? And everyone likes to get around a nice warm fireplace. But even when they're not in use, the fireplace can set the tone for the whole house, right? It does, yes. I mean, think about a beautiful colonial mantelpiece or a mid-century fireplace, even a, a southwestern style place, right? Kiva styles, those are cool. Sure. They're all cool, they're all beautiful, but a fireplace can be dangerous if it wasn't built or maintained properly, or if the homeowner burns the wrong kind of wood, it can cause creosote. So a fireplace should be inspected every year. Right. Most of the time, you're gonna look up there and you're gonna see creosote, and they have a brush on a wire that you push up the chimney and you shake it up and down, you clean the creosote and make it so it won't cause a chimney fire. And an inspection may end with nothing more than a cleaning. Mm -hmm. That would be great. But sometimes it can reveal bigger problems, right? So if you get a good chimney sweep, they're going to inspect the firebox, the smoke chamber, right? They're going to look at the, the hearth right there. They might even go underneath and check it out. They'll go underneath and check all that stuff. But one of the first things that I look at is going to be those flue tiles. Oh, yeah. People don't realize that that clay is pretty dry and sucks up all the mortar out of the masonry cement. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that connection is made, it's actually starting to dry. Yeah. We'll come back a number of years later and those joints will be empty. Right, and that can be a big project, so, you know, fixing all those joints. But as we learn, sometimes you can fix it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, what do we got here, Flint? So these are the terracotta flue tile liners, similar to the ones that are installed in the chimney here. Mm -hmm. um, originally, these liners would have been mortared together. Just stack one on top of the other all the way up the chimney? Yes, from the top of the smoke chamber to the top of the flue. Mm -hmm. And over time, these joints deteriorate. And what causes that deterioration? Water coming down the chimney. Um, creosote mixes with water and produces sulfuric acid. Right. So over time, these joints get eroded, um, deteriorate. And we don't want those joints. No. <laughs> no, a smoke, heat, and Carbon monoxide oh, wow. can escape through these areas. Not going to be going in your house, okay. No. <laughs> so how are you actually going to fix those given the fact that those tiles are already in the chimney? We're going to use this custom made uh, foam inset. How does this and work? We seat this foam set at the bottom of the flue tiles. So this will be pulled up the chimney with a cable here. So this is shaped to be the exact size of our flue? Yes. Very cool. This will be pulled up with the material on the inside. We're going to dump the material down the chimney and we're gonna winch this up. And you can see from the shape of this that this is gonna push the material back into the joints. So you, you basically, you've got mortar going in above this and this is just kind of like a foam trowel? Yes. Well, that is cool, I gotta see that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a perfect fit, nice and tight. Awesome. Just pulling it up. Can't see any daylight at all. There it goes. That's a great way to fix a clay flue liner, definitely. But around here, 50% of the chimneys aren't even lined. Unlined. Unlined. And so if you want to use the chimney, right, for a fire, you got to line it. And right. typically, you guys will choose a stainless steel liner, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be round or oval, and you insert it from the top, push it down until it gets all the way down into the firebox. Right. 
The installer then attaches a mesh base plate to the bottom and pushes it back up to form the top of the smoke chamber. The base plate is secured with screws and then covered with two coats of insulated mortar. And the final step is to add an insulation layer between the chimney and the liner. And that can be done with an insulating blanket or by troweling in loose vermiculite insulation to fill the void. Lining the chimney like that is really not a job for a homeowner because there's a lot to going into it. But not only lining the chimney, you got to think about the firebox. You may have to remove or repair the tile on the bottom or even the three walls in the firebox. I love a good wood fire as much as anybody, but sometimes it's just too complicated or too expensive yeah. to get it repaired properly. Well, I, I work cheap for you. Believe Thank me. you I, for that. Very cheap. <laughs> sometimes the best option actually turns out to be a gas fireplace, and there are two main types. The first is a sealed combustion gas insert. These units require an electrical connection and a gas line in the firebox. With proper ducting of fresh air intake and exhaust gases, these units are highly efficient because they don't allow any conditioned air to leave the building. And people love them because they go off and on with the push of a button. The other main type of gas fireplace is called a gas log. It has a burner on the bottom, a grate, like you might see in a real wood-burning fireplace, and then ceramic logs on top. The flame is open to the room, so it looks and feels like a traditional fire. I like the look of a gas fireplace, especially when it doesn't have that glass panel in front of it. I'm yeah. with you on that one. So Mark, you get a million questions from homeowners, whether they got an old house or a new house. What are they asking of you? A lot of the questions are about operation. Does the draft work properly? Maybe you have some cracked brick, but we can fix all that stuff. The second set of questions I always get is about aesthetics. Mm. Um, we're remodeling the room. We're remodeling the house. The brick look tired. Take those out, replace them with something else. Is that something the homeowner can do? Definitely. If you have just a little bit of skill, it's demo, and then it's just putting pieces back in a good place that I think for a homeowner to start is probably on the hearth. There you go. I usually start by using a cold chisel to remove a single clay tile. After that, the remaining tiles should pop out pretty easily. If the sub hearth is in good condition, you can cut the ceramic tiles and dry fit them into the opening using tile spacers. Then, just lay down a bed of thin set with a notch trowel and set the tiles in place. Once the grout is applied, you'll have a beautiful new hearth. And of course, if you want to do the hearth and the surround, you can do that as well. So here are four new pieces of granite. We actually got them from the same fabricator that we would go to for a countertop or any other granite product. We're going to apply this concrete adhesive generously to the back of the granite to ensure a tight bond. And I like the way you stayed off the edges because you know when we put that up, that stuff is gonna spread. Kristen, you're a natural. All right, great. So now just take the notch trowel and drag it all the way down and spread the stuff out as nicely as possible. Okay. Great. You can bounce that a little too. Yeah, exactly. So why don't you grab that edge? Yep. And now we're going to go flat. So now we want to start at the bottom. We want to flip it up. Look at this, Kristen. See how you, that's how much contact we're making right now. All right, where's that two footer? Right here. Great. Okay. See, we're all plumbed up. We want to check the face, which again looks perfect. So let's grab that other leg and we'll do the same thing. That's great. Yeah, looking good, okay. So, we're gonna let these legs set up and then we're gonna be ready for the top piece. This is going pretty smoothly. Now remember we wanna roll it up. Let's see how this fits in. Watch, make sure the legs don't kick out. Yep. All right. All right, hold that. And I'll give it nice. All right, what do you think? Came out amazing. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. You can take a traditional looking fireplace and make it look more contemporary with just a few pieces of granite. Right, and I love that type of project, but I've actually done the opposite where I've taken a contemporary fireplace and made it traditional. I'll usually start by removing the existing material and cleaning up the original surfaces. Then I'll use thin brick veneer, which is a regular clay brick cut into thin strips. I'll back butter each piece and set it in place and wiggle it just a little bit to fill all the voids. Once the thin set has cured, I'll fill in the joints with type N mortar and knock off the high spots with a brush. When you add the right mantle, that fireplace will look like it was original to the house. You know, I might be a little biased, but I think the mantle is the most important part of a fireplace. You think the carpenter's <laughs> a little biased? Just a little. <laughs> All right, so maybe the masonry is important. Thank you, Tony. But when I look at a fireplace, the first thing I look at is the mantle. And I look at the care and the architectural planning that the builder did when he made it. Now, maybe you want to change it. All right, so you can, there are places that you can go, like architectural salvage yards, where you can buy used mantles like this Look right this. here. Maybe you can find one that will go around your fireplace. Now this one was for a coal insert, but this would be a great piece to have on a wall. Let's say if you had a wood stove sitting in front of it, this would be right behind it. But really, look at the detail. This was done by hand, made these curves, the little groove here, the flat and the bevels. And look at this star carved in this beautiful marble. Artistry, really. Sure is. Yeah, and if you don't like the marble, look at this beautiful one right here that came off of a job set. Look at that. And look at the detail in here. This, this molding detail right here is all done with the hide glue, and it's set in a form and then stuck on. You can see the picture frame right here mm -hmm. and signs of the old molding that fell off. And I like the detail that goes around the opening. It acts like a picture frame. Yeah. But more molding detail here. And then the pilasters. Look at the work in this. Flat panels here. Flat panels here, but more molding detail down here. Really a statement. So what do you do if you don't live near the architectural salvage yard? Well, you can get them online in replicas or different looks that you want, and they go together pretty easy. They come in different styles, in kits, usually in three separate pieces. There it goes. To secure it in place, you attach a few cleats to the wall, and then nail or screw the mantle to the cleats. The last step is installing a small piece of molding around the inside of the opening. Boy, those stock mantle kits go together pretty easy. Yes, they do. But I'm a custom woodworking guy, so any chance I can get to build something on site, I'm in. But any homeowner with a little bit of skill can build a mantle of their taste to match their house exactly. Well, this is very nice. Thank nice you. and quaint. Thanks. You have a wood stove? Heat the house? It does heat the house, and we love it. Um, but what we're looking for is that final finishing touch. Um, we're thinking a mantle might be nice. A mantle would be nice. Nice tile work. Did you guys do this? We did, yep. Um, yeah, very there, nice. There was 70s wood paneling, and we decided to upgrade, but this is as far as we got. OK, so do you have any idea what you want the mantle to look like? Do you want it to be ornate? Do you want it to be plain? Yeah, we're looking for something simple and clean, maybe a little bit more modern. Okay, let's see what you've got around here. Let's look at this window trim right here. Now the casing around this window is plain. It's got a nice flat casing. I like this little detail right here. Mm -hmm. And I really like this stool. It's nice and thick. Why don't we cue off of that and build a mantle of match? Sounds perfect. All right, let's get started. Okay. All right, I've cut three pieces for the mantle on my saw. Okay. On the side, we're gonna use a piece of five quarter by eight. Across the top, we're gonna to use a piece of one by eight. All right. Now, the different thickness shows right here when I put them together, there's a reveal. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that reveal is a little bit too heavy. So to lessen that, I've cut some thin strips down. I'm gonna slide them underneath the piece like this and place it, and that makes the reveal softer. Nice, subtle. Now to fasten the top to the sides, I used a special jig. That special jig allowed me to drill holes on an angle so I can attach the pieces together using pocket screws. All right. I also put a little bit of glue in that joint. 
And obviously we won't see these from the front. I hope not. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I want to do here. I want our mantle to sit on top of the tile okay. to cover this top edge and down each side. That's why I cut a rabbit up each side and across the top with my router, a straight edge, and a straight cutting bit. All right. All right, now when we place the mantle on top of our plinth blocks and we center it, you can see we have a nice straight edge along the top and down the sides. Beautiful. All right. Now we have to do a filler on each side here. We'll cut a filler strip there and attach it. Perfect. All right, Chris, we're picking up our cues for our mantle from this window detail. Right. We've already built the sides and the header. Mm -hmm. Next thing I want to make is this little detail right here. I love it. Perfect. Okay, let's go do it. All right. To make up this small detail, I ripped the strip of wood on my table saw. I mitered it on a 45 degree angle, glued it, and nailed it in place. All right, let me show you the next detail that we're going to build. Okay. All right, it starts with this piece right here. Mm -hmm. We've actually made a thicker piece of this one. Okay. We've also ripped a piece and held it on an angle so it's a flat crown molding, and then it will return into the wall. I love it. Okay, so we're going to start with making this piece right here. Now, remember that your mantle is thicker on one end than it is on the other, so this board's going to have to be cut on a taper. So I'm going to take a board. I'm going to stand it up, and I'm going to mark right here in the face of the mantle, and now I'll mark this end right here. Okay. Now I want this piece to stick three eighths beyond the face of the mantle, so I'm going to measure three eighths from that mark. All right. And put a mark. I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Now I need to rip this board on a taper. To do that, I'm going to use my circular saw and guide it with a shaver. Now I need two pieces of filler strips, one to attach the mantle to the wall and one to attach my crown molding to. To attach the small piece of trim and the nailers to the mantle, I'll use pocket screws. Now crown molding, when it goes on the wall, it sits at an angle. Right. So there's a flat section that goes against the wall and a flat section that goes against the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But we don't want this crown detail. Right. We want our crown molding to be flat. So we're going to take a piece of one by five and rip it down. We're going to rip the piece that's flat against the nailer that we placed and flat to go against the cap of your mantle. Sounds great. All right, now to match that crown molding angle on the back, you can take the crown molding, lay it on the saw upside down, okay. and tilt the saw to follow that angle, and you're all set. All right, now this is how our crown molding is gonna sit on top of our mantle, at that angle right there. Nice. But we have to make a 45 degree angle cut on this end and that end so the crown molding can return around the corner. Okay. Okay? So we have to make sure we hold it in the right orientation when we cut it. So to do that, now think of it. Here's the nailer mm -hmm. and here's the top of our shelf. Mm -hmm. Now what I want to do is I want to turn it up like this, bring it over onto the saw, and I want the back of the saw to be our nailer and the bottom of the saw to be under our shelf. So opposite. Right. Now my saw is set at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. I also want to make sure I hold the board tight against the saw. Okay. At the back and at the bottom. I slide it down and now I'll cut my outside miter. All right, now we've cut our return and we also cut our front piece. So what I want to do now is I want to glue this end and nail it together. Okay. All right, so why don't you put some glue on there for me. All righty. Okay, good. Now I want to take this piece and slide it together. So 
like that. Nice and tight, ooze that glue out. Make sure I'm even on the top. Okay. And now I'm gonna tack it with a gun. Okay, you ready? Yep. All right, let's put it in place. Ooh, it's coming together. It's coming together. Come to me with it. There okay. you go. Right down. Good. This is so exciting. Yeah. It's, let's slide it to you a little bit. Okay. Okay. How's that? It is amazing. All right, let me get some screws and we'll screw it to the wall. Awesome. What kind of screws are those? These are actually three inch ceramic screws. I'm gonna countersink the screws so you can putty over them when you paint it. Perfect. Okay, good. Now, why don't you take this end of the board and hold it up just a little bit because I want to position it in the right location before we drop it down. Okay. Okay, let it down. All right. Okay, now I'll nail it in place. Okay, so that's what the nailing strip was for. You got it. All right. Now I'm going to nail up through the molding. All right. All right, Chris, the mantle is done and I'm passing it off to you. All you have to do is fill some holes, sand it, and paint it. I will do that. I am so excited. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. It looks pretty good. All right, well, you know what? Whether it is wood or gas, whether it's operational or just for looks, I think we can all agree that a fireplace is a key element in any home. I for mean, sure. it adds a lot of character. And value. Yeah, yeah. that too. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. I'm Mark McCullough. I'm Richard Trithui for Ask This Old House. All right. Here you go, Sonny. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, look at that. Now that's hot. A s'more. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Did you, guys, did you guys actually melt these? Yeah. 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 On that? No. Oh, that's oh, electric, no. you dummy. Unbelievable. <laughs> Here's my heat gun. Mmm. Heat gun. George. Oh, fuck. Next time on Ask This Old House, we'll share some of our own holiday renovation nightmares. Oh, oh no! Oh, I'm gonna share a few of my favorite things about Christmas trees. And I'll show you how to turn the front of your house into a winter wonderland. So we're gonna start with the icicle lights in the gutter. Okay. To do this, we're gonna use a clip. Oh, cool. Keith, I love it. It's just magical. I wish you the happiest of holidays. You too, and thanks for having me.